Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global eco.co.uk. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go! Good evening. Yep, yeah, the games are on tonight. Dundee Rangers, the latest is. The game goes ahead and it's only a couple of hours away. Yep, there's been torrential rain over the country over most, most of the day. But Celtic play St Mirren in a couple of hours. Dundee Rangers, Hearts against Livingston, Motherwell against Aberdeen and St Johnson against Kilmarnock. Stephen McGinn, the Falkirk captain, is here along with the former Scotland and Rangers captain, Barry Ferguson. Barry, it's been some day weather-wise, but thank goodness the games are on. Yeah, it's been wild, um, but obviously it looked to the, the Dundee and Rangers game was in danger. But look, um, I think Dundee would have wanted it on, Paul, because they've been in really good form and... I'm sure Rangers uh, wanted it on. They wouldn't want a, a cancellation. So it's going to be a tough trip for Rangers up to Dens Park tonight. Um, as I said, Tony Docker, he's got Dundee playing some really good stuff. Their confidence will be high after a good win at the weekend. But so uh, so should Rangers, obviously, not playing as well as they would want to. But we're scoring a couple of goals in the last um, eight or nine minutes. Rangers are in for a, a tough one tonight. But I fully expect Rangers to get the three points, Paul. Yep, five points in it at the moment. Celtic up against St Mirren, top of the table. Two clubs that you know well, Stephen. Um, obviously, St Mirren, you were there not that long ago. They're in some form, aren't they? This is amazing. Third top of the table, up against the undefeated champions. Yeah, and I'll be looking forward to tonight. Um, obviously, the last result there, they get a point two in a 2-2 draw. Full of confidence. Um, obviously, the only game they've lost in the league this season, they've been down to 10 men against Rangers, so... Um, the whole of Renfrewshire's buzzing at the minute about the town about St Martin it's in its first three third so big game tonight Down at the other end uh, Morton they're not so happy after losing last night we'll talk about the championship soon Hibs in Ross County Barry 2-2 two, two yesterday uh, last night I wonder what Hibs are thinking they had such a great run but mm. they're finding it tough now Yeah listen been 2-0 up certainly at home um, I'm sure Nick Montgomery will be Battly disappointed, but you've got to give Malky McKay and his Ross County players a, a lot of credit. Um, it'd be easy just throwing the towel in, but they kept going. And that's a brilliant point away from home. That's two tough away trips for Ross County, so I'm sure Malky McKay will hopefully, um, well, he'll be hoping that Ross County and his players um, build on that. League Cup semi finals a few days away, Barry, yeah. but if you, are you refusing to think about it until after tonight? No, they, they can't think about it, Paul. They, they, they need to have their mind on get up to Dens Park as I said it's going to be a difficult place to go the weather's no ideal either I'd imagine the pitch is going to be heavy but Rangers need to make sure they come back down the road with, with three points and then they can focus on the big game on, on Sunday against Hearts Stephen you were heading to Hamden last year in the Scottish Cup semi-final was it on your mind though you had big league games as well but it must inevitably be yeah, it did. It, I mean, you try, you do, you do all the right. You try and do all the right things. You speak about not thinking about the semi final, but um, we we it affected us. It affected performance levels. Everyone worrying about who was going to get that jersey for the semi final. In our team at, at, at the top level, you don't expect the guys at Rangers and Celtic played in a lot of these semi finals and finals to affect them so much. But a lot of our guys had never played at Hamden in an occasion like that, and it definitely affected. Um, performance levels affected everyone worrying about well I get the jersey for um, the semi-final and then two minutes into the semi-final you're 1-0 down anyway so uh, we just spoke about it after and, and kind of learning from it and just saying that look these big games you can't you can prepare as well as you can and you can be 1-0 down with VAR after two minutes so you always just have to focus on that next game What are you thinking are you off to the games tonight 08, 08 17 17 700 it's a kind of captain's corner here with Barry Ferguson and Stephen McGinn Barry what are you thinking I see uh, no, it, listen, it, you do think about the, yeah. the games ahead. It's the, the saying of you're in front of me, I know, listen, I'm focusing on the, the next game ahead. But what I, I generally felt of a semi final or a final coming up, I just wanted to start the warm up and then you could focus on um, where you're going to be, be playing. But listen, it does genuinely, listen, the guys in the dressing room will be talking about it. But 
once um, they go out and start that warm up against Dundee their only focus should be on making sure they get past a, a very well organised um, Dundee team it's going to be some yeah it's, go, a, it's go the worst it. bit for me anyway I don't know what Barry thinks but match day quite often now you know the team get into the game you've worked on the team but there's a, there's a period um, obviously times will be different but about 6 o'clock tonight the manager will address the teams um, just small small detail probably because a lot of the detail has been done days before but that time when you're getting ready and then just waiting for the fitness coach to shout you out and the warm up especially if you're older hated the warm ups and it's just that time until, until kick off I, I just hate it I don't know what Barry thinks yeah I just one day play yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah going through all the the 20 or 30 minute uh, warm up the most important thing for me was just standing in that tunnel and, and walking out and getting that whistle going and, and, and playing a game of football I heard Rebecca on the four o'clock news saying, and the rain is going to die down. At that moment, it was absolutely pelting. Did you like playing in this way? I was thinking about the fans going to the games tonight, you know, all over the country. Um, what about playing in a night? If it continues like this, which I don't think it is, it's getting better in Dundee at the moment. But what did you, what was it like playing when it was absolutely bucketing? Yeah, they, they can be the best nights, um, especially on grass. I mean, I know we've got a couple of astro surfaces, yeah. but on grass... And it's been raining all day, and it just settles just in time for kick off under the lights. It's, it's some of the best nights to play. Mm -hmm. As long as there's no wind, I didn't mind one single bit playing in, in the rain. And one thing, there's going to be no excuses up at Dens Park, Paul. The pitch is always in good condition, and it's going to be slick with obviously the weather it's been throughout the, the, the day. So, listen, the most important thing, as I said, Rangers need to go up there and, and come back down the road um, with, with three points in the bag. Because, again, I always say it. I firmly believe that Celtic will, will beat a, again another well organised team in St Mun but I think Celtic will be too strong for them What are you thinking I see Brendan Rodgers this morning was asking the SPFL to help Scottish clubs playing in Europe with the fixture congestion and the timing of some of the games so they're against Atletico whose game's going to be on Friday isn't it Celtic play on Saturday and obviously then head to Madrid for the game on Tuesday I'll go to Barry in a minute because I remember it when you were on your way <laughs> in 2008 exactly I'll come there what do you think Stephen in general I do. I mean, I've got, I can see all sides of the party. Uh, every party's yeah. pointing at um, the, 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 the top boys have already got the international breaks, and not a lot of the players go to play. But that can't be helped. They've got the winter break now. There's a most of January they're not playing, and and with Celtic and Rangers especially, if you move that game to a Friday night, there's a lot of Irish supporters come. Mm. Um, they've booked well in advance. When is that supposed to? Are they able to get to these Friday night games? So there's loads of different ways. I mean, it's nearly impossible to keep everyone happy. And the one thing it does seem to pop up after one of them's dropped points, like what's happened on Saturday. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just think it's nearly impossible. I do think the league try everything they can to to help with the winter break. Maybe I mean to move to help with Europe. Do they just yeah, get rid of sure. the winter break? And move all the games to January. So I, I don't know. You can never win. That's uh, can't keep everyone happy. Great point you make about you know fans travelling across the water, Barry. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things you, it needs to be been taken into consideration. There's no doubt about it. But I do think they could help them better. I think they should sit down and and maybe discuss uh, as you look at, at other teams and other leagues and other countries. They do tend to you maybe give them a free weekend or they'll put their game back a, a day because that extra 24 hours sometimes does make a, a massive difference. I can see where Brendan Rodgers is, is coming from. Um, we had the same issue obviously in 2008. But listen, I would never use that as an excuse because we get beaten in the final because we had a congested um, game, yeah, a lot of congestion in, in the games or whatever, Paul. I would never say that's the reason why we lost that. At the end of the day, we just weren't good enough for, on the night. But I do think, going forward, we could help our, our teams who are playing in Europe. Who's going to be the new manager of St. Johnson? No word yet. Loads of names in there. A few days ago, we heard about Scott Brown. Um, Charlie Mulgrew has thrown his mm. hat into the ring. Could you see Charlie, who played obviously up until the end of last season at Dundee United, in management? I can see in the future. Yeah. I, I think the route St. Johnson will go down as more experienced because Steve McLean was a, a, a young inexperienced manager I th listen I was delighted when he got the opportunity but listen it's not worked out for him I think St. Johnson will go down the route to a manager that's been in the game um, for a number of years and has coached and managed for a, a number of years but uh, the younger guys who have been mentioned you've just mentioned Charlie McGrew I'm sure in the, the coming years there's no doubt that he'll get an opportunity but I think where St. Johnson are in the league Paul in what situation they're in 
I do think they'll go down the, the experience route. I see Dean Shields has uh, thrown his hat into the ring as well and he says he feels he's got the skills to keep them up but David Martindale won't be going, not at the moment. I see that um, Livy have refused permission of St Johnson to go for David Martindale. He's the kind of guy with the experience that you've just mentioned, Barry. Stephen, could you see him, if he was allowed, doing well in Perth? Yeah, well, I think, first of all, whoever goes in, I think it's similar to, to the Rangers' uh, job when it came up in terms of I don't think the recruitment's been good there. Mm -hmm. um, I think the team's poorer than it was last year, and I think it's a, a huge job for someone. So I agree with Barry. I think it's got to be someone experienced, someone that's been in a dogfight. Um, the beauty of being down the bottom of the, the, the Scottish Premier League is you're never too far away from recovery. A couple of back-to-back -back ones puts you right back in the frame, and in this case, it would take St Johnson off of the bottom. So... Um, but I just think it's early enough in the season to save it but I think it needs an experienced manager and a really good transfer window in January and I see Bill Foley the Bournemouth owner Barry he's interested yeah, in getting involved at Hibs it can't happen just now because of the rules but I think they're going to relax the, the rules which listen if it brings more investment yeah. into the Scottish game Paul I'm all for that he's got certainly. a few bob hasn't he he certainly, <laughs> he certainly has um, and listen I'm sure the Hibernian fans will be excited um, about that because obviously he'd want to come in and try and break the, the, the big two but I, I, I still even if there's a lot of investment to come into other clubs Paul nobody's ever going to break Rangers and Celtic yeah, for sure they're far too strong he's got the Las Vegas Knights the ice hockey team as well as Lorient in France uh, you know the club well it's uh, quite a progressive club obviously Ron Gordon died earlier in the year they are going his family are going to can uh, maintain majority shareholding but this is going to happen more and more now isn't it new money coming in yeah they need it um, I think if anyone's ever going to challenge or split Celtic Rangers again it's going to need big investment but to be fair to the Gordon family um, they spent a lot of money in Hibs um, I think the wage bill will be pretty high at Hibs I think there's some big outlays I think Martin Boyle uh, bringing him back from Saudi I think they spent a lot of money on that so as a well backed team and I think performance levels aren't matching up with how well their own, uh, Ron Gordon backed Hibs um, but that next level investment obviously I think is what's needed to get closer to Celtic Rangers you yeah, that, yeah. I mean, brilliant stadium it's really true. good training ground I mean the fans turn up numbers so you, you can see why people are, are looking to maybe invest in a, a club like Hibernian it was, it was very interesting reading I, I don't know if any have seen it the guy that put um, Wrexham to Ryan Reynolds mm -hmm. when he was saying about initially they wanted to get the Scottish team yep. Um, potentially an Irish team because of their roots and some people they knew but the advisor to Ryan Reynolds was don't go to Scotland because you'll hit a ceiling yeah. you'll hit a certain level where the money you're looking to spend you'll never still never be able to challenge Celtic Rangers so just get into the English route where there's not as much of a ceiling on it I did read that. That was a good point for him. Should we look ahead to tonight? Although none of the games are live on telly. You know, they're not on Sky tonight, Barry, which is a pity, isn't it? Because the crowds we're getting are really good. Yeah, the, uh, again, I don't think there's enough games yep. live. I, I think we've got a good product, Paul. Um, but listen, I'll find a way to watch, watch <laughs> some game. Don't worry about that. Indeed. Well, I think you can buy them yeah. pay-per-view. But I think that's where maybe long-term we can bring in that into the game where maybe yeah. there is a SPL um, TV something along those lines because yeah. the product is good and there's a lot of interest out there in it He'll Dundee be on there. TV Dundee uh -huh. TV tonight tonight excellent have they got it? yeah yeah, uh, yeah. yeah they do yeah, right so whatever it is 9.99 or 14.99 yeah. I'll be paying that you can see him in a few years being Scotland's answer to Gary <laughs> can't you? hello Steve McGinn here <laughs> You got the accent. I, thought I, enough was, I honestly yeah. thought I was a football buff. Uh -huh. Is he even more? Oh. Do you reckon? Right. We'll do a quiz. Hibs changed the keeper last night, I see. I didn't get it. Don't right. understand that. Yeah. Um, and he just, sorry, just spoken about the, the David Marshall at the weekend. Um, I mean, we don't know. We don't. You don't get to see the insides. I mean, sometimes yeah. you hear... I don't know if David Marshall's here uh, carrying an injury. Um, I know he's not always been to top level for Hibs um, by his own standards, but... There is a big drop off when he doesn't play, and I, and I know the semi final is huge to them uh, at the weekend. But if the, if there's not been an issue, I, I can't really get my head around it. And the young goalkeeper comes in and ends up making a mistake, uh, and it's a big two points of drop. So as much as I can get my head around maybe drop, uh, resting Martin Boyle, Joe Newell, etc., I'm not really sure I can get on board with the goalkeeper. Yep, Joe Joe Wallacott came yeah, in. Yeah, it, it was a, a strange one. Um, look, I think Stephen's right. I think if you ask Big Mars himself, he, he's not been at the top of his game, but what Mars brings in, uh, brings, sorry, to the 
Hibs team is a presence and experience. I don't think you can buy that. Um, so it certainly was a, a surprise. And you can understand the outfield players because uh, like Boyle's, for me, a, a massive player for Hibs. But that was certainly a surprise. And I think if you ask Big David Marshall himself, he'd be desperate to play last night. If, you, if you're playing any team, uh, I mean, if Aberdeen are to rest um, Kelly Roos tonight, the mother will players and managers saying right let's test this young goalkeeper this backup goalkeeper yeah. today like let's get get at him get shots in get crosses in and it's the first thing you look at when the goalkeeping changes there's something to play for everywhere tonight isn't there just before we go to the break every single ground I mean Motherwell Aberdeen for example well they both need results I think that'll be a feisty one yeah. tonight because you heard Stuart Kettlewell's interview mm. wasn't he too yeah, happy with right. Paddy Robson yeah. um, said and, and I like that because I think there'll be a wee bit of I think there'll be a, a few um, people get in with a few hard tackles and there'll be a wee bit of a ding-dong at the side. But that, that, listen, that's what football's all about. I think it'll be a cracker at Fir Park tonight. Yeah, Motherwell, Motherwell in a good position. Obviously, they've got BRF back. I know the, the results haven't yep. been great, but BRF's a huge player for them. Connor Wilkinson uh, adds goals. He's back fit now. So Stuart Kettlewell's got a full squad to pick from. And I, I agree with Barry. I think it's going to be a good one tonight. Mm. Just watching, I was watching obviously the command at Aberdeen game. I was so yeah. disappointed in Aberdeen. I know they had the game on Thursday night and I get that, but I expected more. Don't take anything away from Command. I thought Command were miles by far the bit the better team, but I, I was I was really disappointed. I expected more from Aberdeen. Um and listen, they're going to find it tough tonight. That's two long trips for them. Um and obviously for what's happened in the, the build up to the game. I'm sure the Muddle players will be right up for it. We, we spoke about what the result, I know they got beat in Germany or Frankfurt, but we spoke about that last 20 minutes, the confidence that brought. It leads to them then going to Ibrox and winning and, and winning well. And then obviously the, the fall off, the uh, drop off from the disastrous result against PUOK um, leads to then just not turning up at Kilmarnock, which happened on Sunday. Who's going to play for Rangers tonight? Who's going to play for Celtic first up? Celtic. We'll hear from Paolo Bernardo, who probably will get a starting berth, or will he? He was talking yesterday to the media, and he mentioned uh, Jota. He's spoken to him, he knows him well. Yes, um, I think so. I, I am working harder to, to make uh, my impact. Jota has done his impact, and uh, I, I want to, to make my impact. Yes, uh, we are friends. I speak to him a lot of times but yes now I have to to make my own history here and hopefully it was good like him uh, they told me that the the city was was good and I think that too uh, the Celtic he told me about Celtic it was a, a really good club a big club uh, like we used in Benfica it's a really big club too. Uh, so he, he told me that it's not too different. Uh, the thing was more different is the weather. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm really enjoying Glasgow, like Jota said, that I will. Well, we'll talk about that shortly. He's not wrong about the weather. And over at Ibrox, before heading to Dens Park, Philippe Clement was speaking about the, the fitness of the club, the puzzle that he's trying to get to grips with. And also, what about uh, Danilo and his fitness for tonight? No, he's ready to play. He's ready to play. We will see what is important in this game, if it's necessary that he starts or that he comes in. It depends on the opponent also, what profiles you need. Uh, physical state of the of the players. He's not ready for 90 minutes. That's that's logical. Yeah, that's the that's a difficult thing for the moment. It's uh, it's it's quite a puzzle. It's the biggest puzzle that I ever saw, to be honest, with all the injuries and players falling out. Like I I need to say one thing more. So uh, John Sutter will also not be available for the game with a with a muscle problem, not a big one, but not available for the game. So. Until now, we started with uh, a lot of players who are not available. Some players falling out also last couple of weeks. So it will be very important every game to, to look really good at, uh, at the minutes of every player and, and try to build their, their physical co condition, their robustness in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months to, to have a, a bigger squad available. Barry, can he solve this puzzle? 
Yeah, well, look, he's clearly not happy and, and the way that when I've heard him speak, he wants to play with a high intensity game. So you need to train like that every single game. I think previous to that, the managers are probably not trained that way. I'm a big believer in you've got to train the, what, the way you want to play, whether that's a Wednesday night, a Thursday night, or a Saturday, or a Sunday. That's the way you've got to, got to train. And obviously, he's come in, he's changed the training, and there's a few people suffering. I know there's been injuries before that, but it's clear that he's, he's not too happy with it, and hopefully over the coming weeks... Um, that will change. What does that mean about the Cairo Chamber and those reports that he's saying they need to use it more at Auchenhowie? Do you buy that? Yeah, listen, it, it can help slightly, but yeah, like all these machines and all that stuff, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really keen on it in terms of, I, I don't think it makes a massive difference. It will make a slight difference, but I think it's all about diet and how you live outside the, the training ground, how you look after, after yourself. You've got to live like a proper proper professional nowadays because to be a, a footballer at the highest level you've got to be an athlete and up here your mentality every yeah, minute 100% yeah. robust yeah. as well I mean yeah. James Tavernier Callum McGregor aren't playing 60-70 games a season because of cryo chamber they're playing because even when they feel something they play it's just uh, but throughout my career I don't think I've ever played 100% yeah. I think I called it a cryo chamber <laughs> It's a cryo chamber, isn't cryo it? Cryo chamber. That's my cry for help on that one. Quick <laughs> we'll break. Get you in one yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's too late for that one. <laughs> the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go. Thanks, Chris, for the traffic and travel. Yep, it's been terrible weather today. It should be getting better, but we'll keep you right up to date tonight if you're heading to the games and some brilliant games tonight. Celtic against third top St. Mirren. Hearts, Livingston through in Edinburgh. Motherwell, Aberdeen, a big game in our patch here. And St. Johnson, looking for a new manager, up against Kilmarnock, who are back on track. And of course, Dens Park, Dundee against Rangers. That game is going ahead, despite, I know there's a bit of speculation earlier today, it should go ahead. Quite a few people on the socials as well saying, Barry, you played over 60 games, well over 60, in 2007, 2008, when Rangers went all the way to the Europa League final, the UEFA final. Yeah, and about five of them were good games. <laughs> <laughs> no, Steady, l- listen, yeah. if you want to play at the top, you want to play at a, a big club where they're involved in most of the trophies, Paul, and, and certainly in Europe, you, you've got to be built to play that number of games. Uh, and I think that's where the new manager, Philippe Clement's a bit frustrated that players will play two or three games and then they'll, they'll pull up with, with some sort of injuries. But I think that... Starts back in your first day of pre-season. I mean, it'd be ideal if, if you had them the first day of pre-season, but obviously it's not worked out that way. And and it, you can see he's a bit frustrated with the amount of injuries because he, he wants the, the full squad to go and have a, a, a real good look at them, Paul, and see who he thinks can go forward with, with him at, uh, at Rangers. Um, so I'll be interested to see the team tonight as well because there is a few injuries who starts in the, the middle of the pitch. But... You can tell in his, his pressers that he's, he's certainly frustrated. Um, and you can see he sent Kemar Roof. He's away over to Belgium to see a top specialist to see if they can get to the, the root of the problem with, with him. And, uh, and I'm sure there's a few others that he's he's concerned about. And somebody that everyone admires, John Souter, Stephen, for example. That's a worry that he's injured again, isn't it? Yeah, and, and you can only hope. I mean, Philip Clement says it's not that serious. Mm-hmm. Um and he could be available for the weekend. But that, I mean, that is part of the thing. I don't see John Souter being able to play over 60 games. Um, I think that his injury history, just be black and white on paper, He's never. it's not something he's done in years. So it's not something that really surprises you. Um, but if they can get, say they play 60 games, if they can get John Souter available for 45, 50, it's a huge success. Barry, he's such a... I like player, him. I, listen, yeah. I, I really like him, Paul. He's just getting them. Fit and available, I'm not saying he's going to start every game because sometimes the manager will, will make slight changes to the back line. But I know he, I know the manager mentioned that it's, it's a slight problem, but it's another problem that you don't need. Um, so I'm sure, not just the manager's frustrated, I'm sure John Suter's uh, frustrated as well. Over at Celtic, frustration that uh, last week Hatati had to come off after, what, five, six minutes against Atletico. Uh, we heard just before the break um, from Bernardo. I almost said from Jota, he's gone. What do you make of Bernardo? His start then, almost a, a full game. And is he going to keep his place tonight? Well, he's not in my team, okay. I've guessed. Um, 
there's a theory behind it but just okay. on Bernardo I think he's yeah, he's not had the, quite the, the Jota immediate impact um, he's by, had to bide his time for his chance but I think he's obviously played in two of the Champions League games now and the cameo against Lazio I thought was pretty promising I thought he did really well against Atletico Madrid I think at the weekend that he should have scored um, so so he looks I mean he, he's promising there's obviously a bit of work to do to when everyone's fit to get into that Celtic midfield but I think there's going to be a, a bit of rotation going on um, in terms of with Hatati being out who's going to, who's going to and I definitely think the, the jersey's up for grabs So what's your team tonight if you were the Celtic manager who would it be? Well, I've gone for Hart, yep. Johnson. Assuming Johnson's okay, which I think the manager said he would be. Yeah, I think yeah. he'll be okay. okay. Yeah. Jo- yeah. Johnston, Carter Vickers, um, Scales and Taylor. I think yeah. Cal-, Cal McGregor in his obvious position just in front. I've gone for Matt O'Reilly and David Turnbull. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think, I mean, St Martin, St. Martin aren't going to just park the bus. They've, they've, they'll, they'll not really change, but at times they're going to be pinned in and... I think in some of the games Celtic have dropped points. If you if you look at the two games they've dropped points, it's St Johnston and it's Hibs, and they probably should have won both games quite comfortably. They haven't, they they, they didn't, and, and a big part of that was not getting the first goal. I just think the home game against St Mirren, where very organised, defend deep at times, defend a box well, it might take a long distance goal, it might take a wee bit of equality in the edge of the box. So I've just gone for Turnbull. In the front three, I think. Um, my Dan Kyogo pick themselves I think Brendan Rodgers might be tempted to play James Forrest but just for the same reason that I've put Turnbull in I think I'm, I'm going to go with Palmer just because I think he's got that little bit of Turnbull as well where he can score it at nothing um, he's got a good shot in him so but it wouldn't shock me if it's James Forrest I've written down James Forrest but you're going Palmer uh, Palmer sorry yeah. Yeah. you're going to go Palmer see, see in terms of big Bernardo I, I think he looks a cultured football player he, he can handle the ball it's, it, it's clear um, and, and Look, I know Stevens went with that team, but I think he'll he'll put him in. I think he'll he'll play him. I, I like to look him. Mm-hmm. He can definitely play the game. There's no doubt he's got a good range of passing, and he looks a a good size as well for a for a midfielder. It's just it's just this current Brendan Rodgers team that is very similar to the way they played in the first spell. But in the first spell, um, say Moussa Dembele was starting the game, and they, they, they've tired the team out. It might be a Griffiths that comes on. It might be an Odson Edward that comes on. Mm-hmm. He's not got that off the bench and I think he knows that. So this first goal at times in these games are going to be really crucial and I think, it, I mean, a couple of years ago that if you think of that invincible team, even though not 70 minutes, 20 minutes to go, I've got Lee Griffiths there if I really need yeah. him. I've got Paddy Roberts maybe off the bench, someone who can get me a, a goal. I think the first goal and, and letting these games drag on, I think he'll know he has to strike first and, and, that, and that is just why I went with Turnbull. Well, here's Paulo Bernard, the... Um Portuguese player saying they call yeah, Bernardo Bernardo no you're absolutely right Bernardo um, he <laughs> said Bernard used to play with Aberdeen he did he indeed I remember one million pound from Oldham well done and did he go to Germany as well but I remember he came a million pound played you against him yeah did you good player I mean, that, wasn't he back then Aberdeen yeah. paying I think it was actually more than a million pound was it? Aberdeen yeah. paid from well here's Paulo Bernardo and he said uh, he and the team are going to improve I, I think so because we can work harder in the trainings and it was the trainings that uh, give me the opportunity to to play in the games and for the other players too. Uh, but the game time, I think it's the most important time for a player because when we play one game, I think we improve a lot more than one or two training sessions. So I think so. So Paolo Bernardo, will he play tonight? Steve McGinn thinks no, but he may well do. He would bring in David Turnbull, of course, who started the season so well. What do you reckon, Celtic fans? 0808 17 17 700 or join the conversation at Goal Football Show. Let's hear from your manager uh, speaking about, well, the first 10 games. We well, always hope that that's what you can produce. I knew it was always going to be a challenge for a variety of reasons, but... Um... But thankfully, the, the players have been absolutely first class and, since they've come in. I think their attitude to learning and development is it's absolutely superb. You know, they, they've really impressed me in that aspect. How diligent they are. You know, they, they're a very close group. Their spirit's very strong, and and they're, they're they're great ambassadors for the club. I think that their humility is is there to see in how they play and how they work, and and how they behave themselves. So. Um, so yeah, so when you have a group of players like that, and then you get new players coming in, of course that takes a bit of adaption. But um, but generally, I've been I've been really pleased um, because, as I said, you want to make a good start, and I think we've we've made a good start. But there's still what 
28 games, league games to go and uh, still a lot of exciting times ahead for us. You think he would take that though, Barry? No defeats, a couple of draws so far after 10 I games? I said it on Monday, Paul, yeah. uh, for a Rangers point of view, I'd take that all day long. Um, 10 games in, um, five points clear. You've got to be happy with that. There's no doubt. Listen, you always want better. You want to be, you're greedy and you want maximum points, but to be five points clear at this stage in the season, you would take that all day long. He was asked about potential changes. We'll see. We'll do a final preparations for that over the next couple of days, check and see how everyone is. But um, but the team that we put out is always to, to to find the result. And it's a it's a great game for us on the back of a frustrating uh, result for us. I think our, our game was OK. It was a little bit slow up until the last 20, 25 minutes. That was the reality. And then we sped up the game and, and showed our qualities. Which is, listen. Sometimes it's it's only natural. I've been in enough games where you've you've played midweek, especially high intensity games, and then you come into your next game, and it's um, you maybe just can't quite get to to that level. You can change the whole team, but then you lose fluidity, and so. Um, but no, I, I think the, the the guys will be recovered, and then we'll go go again Wednesday. And, and like you say, we have a tough run of, run of fixtures. There's never going to be wholesale. Changes that—that's the reality. But um, but what we what we always expect is for the team to be full of speed and tempo, and then if we drop off those levels somewhere near the hour mark or 65 minutes, we can make changes to to maintain that. We just didn't do that from the off uh, at the weekend. But as we sit here, 10 games in, eight wins, two draws, and a team that's still developing, and improving, and with a real tough fixture list away from home then uh, the guys have done really well but we've got to keep pushing Barry what about Rangers at Dundee tonight changes from the weekend yeah I think there'll be well I've got my team written down I think there'll be a a couple of changes well there's a couple of changes in my team okay. um, and I, I fully expect that to happen up at Dens Park tonight and your choice well, you for want tonight it, it would right, be good go yeah. up, right? yeah. um, big Jack Butland sorry about that I'm just telling <laughs> that's you all what good. reasons yeah. um, you were just teeing it up so that's good to have yeah. an ear ghost and Davis and Ridvan um, two in the middle of the park Jack and Lundstrom and then I'm going to go for McCausland to come in for the start right. on the right hand right. side Cantwell just behind Danilo and Seema on the left hand side Cantwell Danilo and Seema yeah, and yeah. I think McCausland's due a wee start Look, I, yeah. I was swithering between Scott Wright and McCausland but do you know what I like to look at this boy. I do. Brings a, a bit of energy. Really positive when he gets the ball. Um, so, why no? Listen, you throw them in. For what I've seen, I think he can certainly do a job. Throw him in and see how he, he does up at a, a, a tough place. And sometimes that could be the making of young players. Uh, that depends on his trainings and his games a couple of weeks. I'm not a coach who cares about age. So look at my track record. Uh, I, in Monaco, I had 70 years old st starting. Uh, in Bruges, the same. In Genk, also young players. For me, it's not important if you are uh, 17 or 37. It's uh, what you prove on the pitch. So, sounds as though uh, we heard him in the Yeah, I, I, to yeah. I totally agree yeah. with that. I mean, McCausland's 20. He, he's, no, he, he's not a kid. He's, he, he should. Um, look, he's been about Rangers for a while now. And as I said, Paul, I, ju I just feel the, the games that I've seen him come on. He's definitely made an impact for me and I think now is a chance to, to throw him in. Um, sink or swim moment for him and I think he'll, he'll swim. Stephen? Well, I've gone for 10 of Barry's team ah. but, but I think he might go with Scott Wright okay. just in terms of being yeah. an away game. But I'd love it. I'd love him to go with McCausland for the reasons Barry spoke about. Mm -hmm. I don't think Scott Wright's got a long-term future at Rangers and I think there's going to be a small window where you could maybe before... Uh, Clement gets his transfer window in January where you could maybe throw the odd young player in so it'd be great if he goes with McCausland um, brave of him obviously you know um, Scott Wright's been a Dundee player he knows what it's about but um, in a split decision yeah I'd love him to go with the young player Manager was asked about the next game big games coming up this week and next week and next month they're all big games there are no easy games or, or games that you just throw away so I want an ambitious squad. I want people who, who are ambitious every day, not only the games, also in the training. So there's totally no difference for me uh, about this game or, or the last game or the next game. No. And he was asked a few times yesterday about the robustness, about the injuries and all the rest of it. What's he trying to build 
as well as consistency in his squad. This is a work that never is short term. That's impossible. Or you need to use uh, things that are not allowed. And we're not planning to do that. And even then, it doesn't help because then it's short term. No, that's a, that's a long term project. Creating physical ability, creating players ready for 90 minutes every three days during months. That's not something you can create by two weeks training. Nobody can do that. Same with robustness, same with uh, building up muscles and making them stronger in general. It's, it's, it's work of, of longer term. But um, everybody in the club knows it's, it's a really important part for the future of, of Rangers. Barry, you agree with him on that? Yeah, it, it yeah. takes time. Listen, yeah. you can't come in and make a huge difference to somebody's fitness or physical presence in the space of a couple of weeks. But I think in time he'll introduce certain methods that he believes in. Um, and then I think you'll, you'll bear the fruits of that further down the line. Which manager made the biggest difference in your time? Any of the clubs that came in and made a difference, apart from Paul Le Guin, it was a, di a difference that you did not want to see. <laughs> um, is that, can you answer that one? Is that a difficult one to yeah, see? Just yeah. a total different way yeah. of training was, was obviously Dick Advocat with mm -hmm. the Dutch influence coming in. Um, obviously, you're used to running for 45 minutes in pre-season and when he came in, I just, we, we never done any run. Never done any running in... in uh, in the pre-season, it was all small-sided games, but very intense, very like, you, you were non-stop, and that was the fittest period that I ever felt myself during pre-season. Um, so, listen, you can go and run all day, I just believe that you've got to kind of, as I mentioned earlier on, you've got to train the way you want to play, and he was very big on small-sided games and, and small possessions, and, and to be honest with you, see when you've got a ball out, Stephen will, will agree with me here, players love it. When you don't see any balls when you walk out, yeah. you think, oh, Jesus, there's all these Grown. cones about and markers and you're thinking, right, this is a running session. But, yeah, that's certainly the biggest difference I felt when, when Paul Le Guin uh, came in. Paul Le Guin, sorry, yeah, Dick Advocate Dick, came yeah. in. It was the difference he made in, in terms of fitness. And obviously, technically as well, mm. we got a lot better. Well, I certainly did. Yeah, you sure did. Stephen, for you, can you remember a manager who came in and changed things almost immediately? Mm, not not so much a um, not so much a, a drastic change. Uh, I've had managers that come in and um, find their best team quicker. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you, you know when you're training who your best players is, and you're thinking how is he playing ahead of him, etc., etc. I've had managers come in mid-season and the, the results improve, and a lot of it is to do with the best players all yeah. playing. Um, the biggest change for me in terms of a total eye note opener was when I moved to, to England when I moved to Watford yeah. from, from St Mirren I had an amazing um, education at St Mirren there was a lot of experienced players in the team um, Gus and Andy were really experienced taught me until um, I was blue in the face the basics of the game mm -hmm. um, loved it but when I am down to England and it was a genuine kind of way of playing and just opened my eyes to the way kind of the modern game's gone. Um, that was a, that was a massive change for me. Quick break and then we're back. And good time to call 0808 17 17 700. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go! Another busy one as you look towards 6 o'clock tonight on the M8. You're queuing on both directions from Junction 20 at the M74 Interchange through to 15 for Town Head. Now, if you're going east, your traffic's easing after an earlier flooding on the exit Slut Road at Junction 21 for Seaworth Street and M74 Junction 1. But you're still looking heavy back to just before Junction 26 for Hellington. Go west, you've got stop start traffic from the Erskine Bridge back to 25 for Cardonald and the Clyde Tunnel. So please be patient if you're heading this way or find an alternative route if you can. On M77 southbound, you've got 10 minute queues from Junction 1 at the Breck Road back to the M8. Junction 22 at Plantation and Trespass Building. M74 northbound, you've got 10 minute delays from Junction 1 back to 1A for Pomo D. Clydeside Expressway is looking heavy southbound from the M8 merger Anderson Cross back to just before the Riverside Museum. You're looking slow northbound through the Clyde Tunnel between Governor Partick and through in Scotston tonight. You've got Annie's Land Road closed anti clockwise for roadworks from Laurel Park Gardens to Southbury Drive. Looking further afield on the M80 in both directions, you're looking heavier from Cumbernauld Lowood through to Denny Lone Head and on your public transport you've got no problems reported. And just remember you can find the very latest travel updates at any time. This is go.co.uk. Thanks Chris. And that's your final traffic report. For yeah. now, yeah, for now.
Well, you just couldn't be bothered coming back in the next <laughs> for the next one. No, Chris, thanks so much. I know you're uh, moving to the sea suite. We're going to uh, <laughs> hear you on air at times in the future. Hi, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Monday to Thursday next week, covering for Big Joe. So that should be it, that should be a lot of fun. It, that was a plug, wasn't it, Barry? We wish him all the best, <laughs> don't we? Yeah, yeah. listen, Chris, good man. Um, I don't know what they're going to do without him in here, right enough. Yeah. But going well, to miss your Scotland strips. What ones you got on the night? Yeah. Where, where, where yeah. you from? <laughs> Stephen, good to work with, isn't he? Yeah, delighted. Yeah. Delighted he's hanging around. Uh, still see him in the building time to time. Chris, thanks so much. Thank you. You up to date with the traffic and travel? Do I press the button now? Yeah. Yeah, I do road. see. <laughs> thanks, Chris. We'll hear you next week. Standing in for Joe Kilday. What year was that? Yep. That strip. Uh, <laughs> I think that was the seventy-eight one. Mm. Argentina World Cup. Oh, you yeah. were there? Yeah. No, I wasn't. No. Eighty-two. Spain, right. but no, I was far too young. Uh, even in Spain I know seems a long time ago but it was good great fun brilliant World Cup Jock Steen was in charge mm -hmm. and some of the players Kenny Douglas Graham Souness phenomenal Miller McLeish and all those uh, Stephen McGinn as well. Stephen a few people are asking when are you going to be back because uh, you've been out all season with the knee injury how's it coming on yeah I'm getting there hoping to get back onto the pitch um, for next week so um, thankfully the boys keep winning um, it's not putting the pressure on me to think I need to rush back and um, gives me a fight in my hands to get my jersey back once I get back Yeah, but it's a great run isn't it and the Aki's just tucked in behind them it's a great league this year Division 1 yeah I think that's going to get right down to the wire between Falkirk and, uh, and Aki's um, as Stephen says listen Falkirk in unbelievable form um, and they're missing a couple of players as well so once I get them back it'll make them even stronger as I said, but look, look that, that League One, it's a tough league. I mean, they'll know we, we thought it's a tough league to get out of, Paul. Um, but I think this could be the year that, that Falkirk eventually do it. And that was William on from Larbert asking how you were, Stephen. They look forward to you coming back this weekend. Queen of the South, isn't it? Off to the Dunhamers and up to Cove Rangers for the Ackies. Two big yeah, games. Yeah, 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 it's not often. I mean, I've, I've been in the Championship and you, you don't know who your direct rival is until... Uh, maybe three quarters into the season um, but from very early on it's felt like a, a big points total is going to be needed to win this league um, obviously the Aki's they've had a shock result at home to Edinburgh City you almost write that off that um, they're going to win the game and um, but then they bounce back and have a brilliant win up at Montrose so it's going to need a big points total but um, we, we, we know we know what we need to do um, and as Barry said we were missing a few at the weekend I was quite nervous about the game on Saturday but yeah. the boys got the job done by half time I mean there's four full time teams in yeah. League One obviously Falkirk Ackies Cove Rangers um, and Queen of the South who Falkirk are obviously playing at the, the weekend so even, even when you look at the full time teams coming up against the part time yeah. teams there's, there's a lot of good players in their leagues um, they've just not had the luck maybe to get that opportunity Paul to play higher um, but there is there's a very good standard still tight at the top of the championship as you know Barry Dundee United winning 2-0 at Airdrie that's, that's some, a good result isn't it? Yeah. Airdrie are a good team yeah. Rhys McCabe to be fair to him has got him playing um, some decent stuff but Dundee United now are, are starting to motor well, I, I think the result of the night last night was rough. Yeah. Um, yeah, you look at the outside the window. I mean, Capel is not the greatest place to play football at times. The way Morton play, um, it, it's a really difficult place to go and to go and win there two one. I said, if Rafe can just hang in there to the second half of the season and make Dundee United have to win this league with the, with the pressure within that club financially to be back in the Premier League and everything that comes with it, if Rafe can just hang in there, and I thought it was a quite a, quite a not a surprise because they're a good side but I thought that's a, that's a big statement win that for Rafe oh, that could be a banana skin last night and what about the Jags Barry they were up twice but it ended up 2-2 at home to Air United yeah they'll be disappointed yeah. when you go up as you mentioned there Paul you go up twice and and you drop a couple of, pow of, a couple of points sorry at home but listen they're still sitting in third place um, but I think that league as I mentioned I, I, for me when I looked at the start of the season I, I tipped Wraith Rovers because obviously if you look at Wraith Rovers squad, new owners, they've spent a bit of money. I'm not saying money will buy you the league, but they've got a good team there. But obviously, Jim's got Dundee United playing some good stuff. They've went away to a place last night and got a, a brilliant three points. But I think that's one of these leagues that's going to go down to the final game of the season. 
and uh, Scotland's women losing last night, Stephen. Maybe no surprise because we lost heavily on Friday night. Um, and last night, I see the manager was saying as well, these are difficult games to play. You know, Tuesday nights, not to get difficult to get people out. And we've been chosen to play on these nights rather than getting maybe a Friday at home when you can get a crowd. Yeah, um, obviously difficult after losing 4 0. Netherlands are a good team. They're in pot A. You're not going to get any yeah, easy sure. games in pot A. And, I think it looks like the girls are going to get relegated. So, a disappointing night. I'm just just quickly back to... Yeah. I apologise to any part of Thistle fan listening to bring it up, but when when you think of where they were in the playoff, mm. um, in such a good position up at Dingwall, you think the way... I, I couldn't help but think it when I was looking at the fixtures last night. I always think about it and think, part of Thistle would have been at Easter Road last night. All right, do you? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, um, again, they had the yeah. game, they had all these good... Pl- sure. They were just in such a good moment, they end up losing half their team and are struggling at home to air. It just, football's such a mad world. Yeah, top of the table, Dundee United, 27 points. Wraith Rovers won fewer, of course, on 23 points. Partick Thistle, you mentioned, on 16. Then there's Ayr, Airdrie on 13 are both on 12 along with Queen's Park who also were challenging uh, just a few months ago to come up Dunfermline on 11 Inverness on 8 along with Morton and that was despite Big Dunk getting a win at the weekend so yeah that's a good division as well and it's one that you'd love to be in next season Yeah it's, it's the aim I mean Falkirk the crowds we're getting just now it's amazing um, it's amazing what you can do and you can build momentum at, at that football club 4,500 uh, on Saturday so the, the Falkirk need to be at least in the championship um, and that's our aim between now and end of the season to put the club back in that league looking forward to the games tonight if you're heading out there take remember, care yeah. remember Brockville oh, I do yeah I used to enjoy covering games there what was it like to play in no, I, I, yeah. um, my brother played there of course he did uh, that's right Falkirk. was it after Hearts yeah, John Lambie was yeah, the manager I remember I knew he used him to well down yeah, that the great. Yeah. couldn't <laughs> see at night night games the floodlights <laughs> were honestly you couldn't see when you were yeah. in the stand yeah. you couldn't see anything <laughs> You know the line about a player who was injured and he was kind of concussed, but in those days he went straight back on. He went, I don't really know who I am. He says, you're Pelly, go and play like him. Um, I don't, I've, n- I've never been to Brockville, yeah. but I was no. speaking to a friend recently. The supermarket um, now, I think. Yeah. We used to, obviously being from Clyde Bank, we used to sometimes at half time get on to play at Kilbowie or, 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 yeah. yeah. or, or at Boghead in Dumbarton. Mm. And I think I used to love playing there and think it's amazing and stuff yeah. like that. And then you speak to people and say, oh, that was a dive. <laughs> That's how old am I? I played at oh, both Bulkhead and <laughs> New Kilbowie. Remember just, the, the windows yeah. behind the goals? Uh, crazy. Kilbowie. It was. It was wet, absolutely. wet, wet, sponsor yeah. them. And they were in the top division, as you well know. Because yeah. I remember, you'd go David see, Cooper. Yeah, David Cooper. You'd Terry Butcher, mm. Chris Woods. And Rangers playing at Clyde Bank. It would be the same with Celtic as well. But at that point, Rangers had just brought up all these superstars from England. It, it, Phenomenal days for the Bankies who are now one of the junior clubs. Do you still call them juniors? What about a player? He's not much younger than you, Barry. He's the Ballon d'Or winner again for the, what, eighth time? What do you make of Lionel Messi winning that on Monday night? Yeah, listen, I, I thought you had to get it. You know, everybody was going about Haaland, and, and rightly so, because of the, obviously the amount of goals he scored, but he's, he's just a genius. Paul, well, uh, he he's the best that I've ever seen. Yes, I mean everybody compares him and Ronaldo and let, let's be honest Ronaldo's numbers are phenomenal as, as well but Messi I, I could just he's the type of player that you could watch all day and I was lucky enough to play against him yeah. a, a, quite a few times and when you actually come up against him it's just magical what he can do it must be Stephen what are you thinking Ronaldo didn't take it well did he <laughs> what number did he come? Was he 180 or Not something? Sure. 300? Not sure, but yeah, but that's yeah, Ronaldo. No, I mean, yeah, Messi, sure. I mean, the thing about Messi is it's it's what Barry said, it's just, it's like magical, it's special, mm-hmm. it's something that nobody else can do. And you think about a lot of people, um, maybe Ronaldo fans are saying maybe that Haaland won a treble, scored fifth. Yeah. It's just, see when you, you see stats like that, see the goals Haaland scored, that mm-hmm. Messi bettered that in five different seasons. <laughs> You think of the impressive numbers, Haaland scoring 50, 52 or 53 wow. goals, and you're thinking, would, in 20 or 30 years, people are going to look back at the era with Messi and think, a football, it, wasn't as, it must have been easy, because he, how can you score 80 and 90 goals a season? Phenomenal. Just the things he, he does with a football. Yeah. How, how can you do that? Can't imagine. Look, yeah. at, look at how you played the career you had. Do you, know, do you know the biggest thing yeah. that jumped out at me about him? Not just about how good he was on the ball, See if somebody clattered them mm-hmm. or went through them, you just get back up. You wouldn't even complain about it. Just go and, and play the game again. And he gained, uh, that's 
when I was playing against I thought to myself wow he has something special Barry, John, Paul we're back after the news and we'll have team news as you head to the matches tonight Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial and public sector customers with access to a wide range of renewable energy products including solar PV, battery storage air source heat pumps and eco garden makeovers we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Switch to clean renewable energy and reduce your bills by up to 70%. Let's go! Game day. All the matches on tonight. Celtic up against St Mirren. Dundee Rangers. Hearts against Livingston, Motherwell against Aberdeen and St Johnson against Kilmarnock. And in this hour we'll be bringing you the team news from the games and also south of the border as well as Carabao Cup. I wonder who's going to win that one. And in Scotland we're getting ready for our own version, the Viaplay, the League Cup semi-finals this weekend. Which Barry already, you said earlier in the season, Rangers have to win this weekend and they have to win this Cup. Yeah, the Viaplay. and I stand yeah. by that, Paul, the... I firmly believe that um, if Rangers want to kick on, um, they need to make sure they, they bring that back on the 17th of, of December. And uh, as I said, I'm not being disrespectful to Hearts or Hibs or Aberdeen, but the holders are out. They get put out early doors with Kilmarnock. And right away, I, I said on this show that Rangers have to be bringing the, the League Cup back to Ibrox. He was asked the other day, this is Philippe Clement, about what about the chances with the, you know, the, the turnaround at the weekend, Rangers getting the late, late goals, making it a couple of points closer to Celtic, just five in it. He was asked about what are his chances of uh, of lifting the title. I'm, I never talked about that, but it's a good question to go around to get me uh, to a certain answer. It's a good try. <laughs> it's not the first time that happens. We're focused on ourselves. So game by game, I don't want anybody in this building thinking about what can be at the end of the road. I want that everybody's focused on the road to stay on the road and to make these roads stronger and stronger that we can compete in, in every competition. That's the only focus this club and this team needs to have. Barry, you can tell he's got experience, hasn't he? He can yeah, handle it. And listen, yeah. uh, spot on, you've got to worry about yourself and make sure you produce the goods in terms of getting three points or, or like in, in the game of, in Sunday against Hearts, making sure you get through to the final. You, you, can't, you can't make a difference elsewhere. You, what you can do is make a difference where you're playing and that's obviously his mindset as let's take care of ourselves and see what it takes us he was asked any additions in January something we spoke about on Monday night uh, no it's much too early to talk about that because we we still have two months to go so I hope in these two months we can uh, we can make this this squad much much stronger he's not going to say that is he that, no, but yeah. listen he knows he want to bring in his own guys in his head Paul I, 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 I'm sure that the Rangers board will try everything and their power to try and make it happen, whether that's a permanent transfer or whether that's loans. But I'm sure the new manager will want to bring in a few players, not just to better the squad, that brings a bit of freshness as well. When you see new players walk through the dressing room, you're thinking to yourself, right, here, here we go, a bit more competition. Stephen, what do you expect in January? Big changes. Um, I think when, one, of, one of the reasons I said about Derek McInnes for the, the Rangers job is I, I didn't think the squad was good enough at all. And, and I thought, if, you, if someone comes in and tries to make drastic changes with that team, it, it's, it could get worse. Um, but I've actually been quite impressed with Clement. He seems really clever. Um, he's definitely not going to give us the sound bites that Michael Beale used to do, sometimes make bold statements and come back to haunt them. I think the reporters in this country are going to have to work harder to, to get any from him. Um, but I think there's, there's been nearly no change on the park. But from his first week in the job... I mean, they got battered for, for long spells in Prague, but get out of there in a, in a two-horse race. He's got his point away from home. He's narrowed the gap. I know it was a difficult week for Celtic in terms of playing Hearts away, Atletico Madrid and then Celtic, Hibs at home. But they, he did his part. I mean, probably pretty fortunate in the end, the way they did it and how, and how they played, but he's narrowed the gap down to five. But I just think... I just think you'll know that that's from from training, from games that that's not good enough in terms of wanting to win league titles. He's here to win the league title uh, for Rangers, and he's going to have to make big changes in January. But I think between now and then, 
he's not going to change too much. He's just going to try and be get get them better at the basics, get a wee bit more out of some of those group, and and use them, and 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 then move them on in January. Are you saying, Stephen, you see an improvement, a small improvement, or it's hard it? to, an, an improvement in terms of a lot of the performances are quite the same. The results have been better in terms of I thought it was a great point in the circumstances in Prague. You can't you can't argue with the fact he's narrowed the gap. Um, just w w within a week, and he had to do his bit part. If Celtic had dropped any points, he's, he's did his part. Um, but I thought maybe with him coming in, we'd see a different formation. We'd see maybe different players use it. Very very similar similar to what Michael Beale would have picked. I think in terms of the injuries and stuff like that. Um, I'm really surprised he's still going with Dessers. I'd be absolutely shocked if he goes with Dessers again tonight. Um, but. But that probably adds to my point from earlier where I think he's just trying to keep them all together before moving a lot of them on in January. Let's hear a little bit more from him. That I'm positively surprised about some players in the squad. That I saw less things in the games that they played at the beginning of the season. That I see potential to grow. And in general in the, in the Scottish League, we I knew it's, it's a very competitive league with a lot of physical teams who are strong with a good organisation a low block waiting for transitions and, and, and for set pieces. So no surprises in that way. Barry, I wonder what you yeah, think. Yeah, I'm just yeah. assessing over the, the three games. The first game, Hibs, I've got to be honest, we don't take any away for Rangers. Rangers were really good, but yeah. Hibs were all over the place. Too wide open. And I firmly believe when you come to, whether it's Ibrox or Celtic Park, you've got to frustrate and stay behind the ball and, and be compact. But listen, they, they, over, they, they ran over the top of them. Prague, wasn't he great but the last 20 minutes Rangers could have ended up winning it and then obviously Sunday's game as I said it wasn't great the difference that I've seen if that game on Sunday was three or four weeks ago Rangers would have lost it you reckon it wouldn't have happened yep, they kept yeah. going mm -hmm. albeit it wasn't brilliant but they kept going because um, I know what it's like in Ibrox fans and they've got every right to be frustrated and getting their back but they kept going they kept putting balls into the box kept trying to create and um, eventually they, they got the obviously the, the bit of luck let's be honest we, we have been a penalty but it was 100% a penalty but as I said Paul watching it I thought to myself yep yeah, three or four weeks ago Hearts are walking out that stadium with three points that's the mentality isn't it he's the manager because missing the penalty getting the stick because of that that moment you can lose confidence you can go down you can stop taking responsibility but he took the second penalty he scored it and afterwards, he gave the assist for the second goal. And I want to see a lot of players with that mentality in my dressing room. I want to see everybody with that mentality in my dressing room. Because then we're going to make an amazing season. That was a big up for his captain, wasn't it? Who often gets so much criticism, but he stepped up at the weekend uh, after the penalty miss. Took the next one. Yeah, and I think if he'd missed that one as well, he'd take the third one. I think it's um, his success rates high with penalties and... I don't really see any, I don't really see anyone in trying to get the ball off him yeah. as such. Um, I think it's just a, a stone wall. He takes the penalties, but I just I just think would he'd have to be world class to, to totally just come in and the results and the performances come together. Um, he'd have to be one of the best managers in the world in terms of what he inherited. So I just I, I think it's a results part of the world. His results have been good, um, and I think he'll be content with his first couple of weeks in the job what about Celtic in action tonight a few people on saying they heard your team uh, Paolo Bernardo you reckon will be on the bench might be David Turnbull it could be the manager was asked yesterday Brendan Rodgers about who's going to replace Hitati well, I think it's, it's it'll be him and for other players that we have in that position that will get the opportunity I think that with Paolo he's he's a fantastic young professional he's come in from a different country adapted settled really well and he's really looking to take on board the football philosophy here in terms of how we want to play. He's obviously played his, his, his first game or virtually the whole game against Atletico Madrid. It was always going to be a challenge for him at the weekend. But, uh, but for that first uh, 60 minutes, he, he worked hard and, and did very well. So uh, but I just think over time, he'll get better and better. But we've also got Dave Turnbull and Odin, like we say, who can come into that position as well. So... Um, so the opportunities are there for players and will be there for players, uh, both in training and in the games, and then it's just about taking those opportunities. 
because uh, he is a special player Hitati Barry yeah that, that, listen yeah. I don't care that, that's only my opinion I think he's going to be a massive miss I think if you look at that Celtic midfield the strongest by a country mile is McGregor Hitati and O'Reilly and listen none of the players that Brendan Rodgers has mentioned they're good players but I don't think they're at the quality uh, Hitati and, that, and that's obviously an issue now because that's a few injuries he's picked up over the last couple of months so I'm sure they'll be wanting to get the, the bottom of it because um, you don't want to be losing one of your top players for that lengthy period. Here's the manager speaking about Hitati and his injury. Yeah, I think it's a disappointment for him. He's had a bit of a broken start to this season uh, and obviously this year will take him over the halfway point of the, the league. So it is, it's, it's very frustrating for him, especially someone who really commits himself to his game and He's professionalism, he's everything he does, he tries to do right. So um, he's in a great place for that support from the coaches, the manager to the, the medical team, the whole, you know, the uh, the whole staff here will, will support him and, and like we do all the players and hopefully we can get him back uh, sooner rather than later. It's just investigating really everything that he's, that he's doing outside of here as well as here and trying to piece it all together. There's also just, unfortunately, players that, Sadly, their collagen means that they pick up lots of injuries and and how their how their body is and they just can never maybe sometimes stay fit. You know, he's a guy that's come into the game late. Um, he's into here. He's done fantastic when he's been fit and available here for for Celtic. So I think it's just a case of just trying to look deeper into everything around his uh, development and and what he's doing here and what he's doing away just to see if there's anything that uh, we can find out because ideally you want your best players available and uh, he's certainly one of our top players Quite detailed about the injury and about his potential and you know what he's done in the past what did you hear from that Stephen? Yeah probably the bit that stands out is the is he someone that maybe is going to be injured all the mm -hmm. time um, is, he, is he trying to scare off potential bidders <laughs> he's injured all the time but no it's but it is true, it's um, it's a guy that came into football late. In Japan, I don't know if they play every three days in, in all that different types of weather with European games and, and the demand Celtic put on them. Um, but I think, I mean, you could see the emotion on him when, when he got injured. I mean, it, as much as he loves playing for Celtic, I don't think he's made any secret of where he wants to get to in his career, and that being the English Premier League. And he was just getting back to his best there. And he's probably starting to, to realise that I'm, I'm in, back to my best here. Because it did take him a few weeks, I think, some of his early performances for Celtic after his first injury weren't at the, at the same level. And, and then it goes again. And, and by, the, by, the, by his reaction, I think he knew it was a bad one. Mm -hmm. Barry, he doesn't often speak that way. You know, the, the details of the player, we all know Hatati is so, so good. Um, but they're going to miss him, no matter who comes in. Yeah, you, you're all, like any team's going to miss the quality. He, he, he's got Paul there's, there's no doubt about it I, I've said plenty of times and I, I think he's got all the attributes he could play at the, the highest level um, but there is going to be a concern there's no doubt about that and you, you hear the depth that Brendan Rodgers actually goes in they're, they're obviously going to look at all sorts what, what he does away from football he was going on about collagen yeah. has he got enough in his body um, so I would imagine he's going to be doing these collagen shots that everybody's doing <laughs> Um, but listen, it is in a serious note. That's one that they, they want to try and get sorted because two month, Paul, well, it must be a serious one if he's out until the the, the turn of the year. So you, you you don't want to be missing players of that quality because it, listen, it will hurt any team. Hmm? I mean, you, you don't know about the first thing you think about is football. We all know the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. You think grade three, don't you? Right. And grade three, any muscles injuries, you're, you're looking at months, and it's uh, it's quite, it can it can often be quite bad. Have you had the collagen? Have you had to take it? Um, sometimes you get given these shots and all that. and you, I mean, I don't know if it's like the old Space Jam movie when you're, you think you're drinking magic water. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I took all my, my vitamins and I took everything, but I don't know if you notice a, a big difference um, yeah. in, 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 the, in the games. Is there anything that can grow cartilage back? <laughs> <laughs> I could drink that. <laughs> Call the I doc need it as well. Yeah. <laughs> the doc, no doubt, will send us a message. Uh, let's hear a quick bit from Paolo Bernardo about playing for Celtic. It was really good. Uh, first start for me here in this big club. The game was not so good, but we have a game on Wednesday, and I think we will get better. Uh, it's a little bit 
bit different than Portugal, but uh, I'm really liking to be here and Celtic, Celtic are really support me, so I'm really comfortable here. So we'll have the Celtic team news soon. Gregory has been on and the only one he disagrees with you is um, on Bernardo. He's got him in rather than David Turnbull. You might be right, Stephen McGinn. You might be wrong. We'll find out soon. Did you see on Sky there that obviously West Ham have got Arsenal tonight, Barry? Mm -hmm. And we saw Declan Rice arrive. Uh, that was brilliant the way he was with the backroom team, wasn't it? Yeah, listen, I mean, that, that's a big part of his career. They got him. Yeah. No, no, they got him. Listen, Declan, Declan Rice obviously worked really hard at it, but I love seeing that when players go back to old clubs. They, they don't forget. Um, and these guys behind the scenes do so much for, for players. Um, you don't realise how big an influence they've got in, in, in footballers. So, yeah, it's great. And, and listen, to be honest with you, he's, he's turned out, in my eyes, a, a real top midfielder. I like him. He's got everything about him. He's got that nasty side. He's actually a better footballer than I, I thought he was. Like Watching him away at the start of last year, I wasn't sure if... Like he was always going to be a Premier League player, but go, oh, could they go to that that top four? But listen, he's he certainly proved that with Arsenal. He's been a a brilliant signing for them. Hundred million pound player. And Stephen, did you see it? And you know, people were going to shake his hands, and he gave them all a hug. He, it was brilliant. It was good to see. You know, he's a superstar, but he hasn't forgotten where. Well, it started with Chelsea. Best, but yeah, exactly. I like, like it. It's yeah. something. I mean, some, as Barry says, sometimes you, when you're at football clubs and you spend, you're not just spending it with the players. I mean, sometimes some of my best friends in football. Are, being the non-playing staff, maybe some of the masseurs or uh, kit men uh, have brilliant relationships with. But I think as well, when you think over the last, it's got better over the last few years, over the last 20 years, you think of the amount of times English clubs have played in maybe the UEFA Cup, Europa League, now the Conference League, and they've played weakened teams. And it's just like, let's get out of this. West Ham have not won a trophy in a long, long time. He's, he's He was a huge yeah. part of that team that won a major trophy. So I think, I mean... If Newcastle eventually do it, hopefully Villa can do it this year. It's, you remember for a long, long time. Brother John on fire, another goal the other day. Yeah, I thought he'd made a mess of it. I think his first <laughs> touch set him up where he, he ends up having to take on his right. But yeah, he's just flying. The team are so well coached. They're, they're in such a good place. Um, as the games are just coming now, I mean, touch wood, but you're, you're not really worried. You just they, they just look a real top team at the minute. What difference is, mate? Just over a year. Yeah, the, and, and do you know what? I mean, You've obviously been down to Villa Park. I played there a, a right few times. It's a brilliant stadium to play in as well. The atmosphere's brilliant in it. Um, and, and listen, they, 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 are, they could be pushing. Yeah, I'm not saying they're going to win the league. There's, I don't think that's going to happen. But they could push big time and maybe He's, try and creep into that Champions League space. We you think of your AT moments, what a player he's been over the last few years, he literally can't get into that team. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. his performance in, in Holland the other night against Altmar was exceptional. I mean, that was back to him at his very best. Yeah. He still just can't find a place at the team. So that's that's how well everyone's playing. That's that's where they're at at the minute. Is the biggest worry if Ten Hag leaves Man United, one of the contenders would be in the Midlands? He'd be a no-brainer, as would Ange Postecoglou yeah. in terms of like potential options. But I think the Villa fans know... And Unai Emery knows that he's got the full back in the club, and the fans, he's like a god to the fans. Is he? Yeah. He, he's did the big, big club, he's, he's been mm -hmm. at Arsenal, yeah. he's been at Sevilla. I think he's settled, and I think he's building something special. But he's not been at Man United. I know, but it's not working out for yeah, a I lot of people. The next I know, is. I know. Angelus Postacoglu. Angelus? Yeah, I'm just giving them the full <laughs> name. <laughs> Angelus, Ange Postacoglu, yeah. do you reckon he will be? Yeah, yeah. yeah. listen, I don't care if, my, uh, if it did happen at Man United. That's he's stands out like a, a sore thumb. He's, they've tried everything else, Man United. They've tried the big names. Yep. They've tried the experienced league managers. I think he's box office, and I think he'll bring a, a brand of football. I, I, I agree with Barry. I think he's the, the standout candidate. Am I being naive though? If they did come to Ange in the next month or two, do you think he would leave yes. Tottenham? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? I just do. I do. Because I it's Man United. Yeah. Man United. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. He goes. Yep, they've been in decline for a, a number of years now, but still round about the world, they're probably the biggest club. They've been in decline, they've spent the same amount of money as Man City. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's going to come in and what player yeah. do you want? I want sure. him, him and him. He's got an idea of how he wants to play and no matter what you see at Tottenham, he's, he's got these guys running for him. Good for Scottish football, isn't it, Barry? Because they do look down their noses. It's, yeah, it's yeah. the same managers, but the yeah. big thing for me is players. When players go down there, like obviously Stephen's brother, but there's, I mean, I could, there's a countless players I could 
name that have went down to the Premier League and done brilliantly and there's nothing better because I honestly do believe there is an ignorance to the game up here and there is a lot of good very good Scottish footballers um, and when they go down there and, and show what they're made of I love it Champions League a real ambition and possibility for Villa for next season yeah well especially in terms of it could be five yeah, of uh, five yeah. teams in the, in the Champions League but honestly like for, in, immediately probably just as a brother John's the captain Aston Villa they've not won a trophy in a long long time you, you can't help but look at the Conference League I mean the league's obviously the bread and butter for the football club and for the business side of stuff but I'd love to go to that uh, conference final when John lifts that trophy where is it do we know no no, no. looked at it no. let's don't check it, Barry. Jinx it we could be available we could be when that would be what May late May we could be, could be arranged couldn't it get the jet Head over there, that'd be brilliant. You can get that. Quick break and then we're back. It's Stephen McGinn, Paul Cooney and Barry Ferguson. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. For great customer service and a free home survey, call 0800 233 5788. Let's go! On the programme tomorrow night, we'll have Andy Walker here, along with Graham Dorans, who was with us a few weeks ago, Barry. He made a good debut with us and he's coming back tomorrow. You yeah, know listen, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, actually... Obviously, I bumped into him a couple of times, yeah. but at the Masters, um, yeah, yeah, I found him a real good guy. Played at a real good level as well. Had a few injuries the last few years of his, his career, and he's obviously playing down at junior level yeah. now, which mm-hmm. came as a yeah. bit of a, a surprise and a bit of a shock. But listen, he, he still loves yeah. the game. Yeah, Johnson mm-hmm. Burrow, yeah. that's the one I was yeah. trying to think there, but you've just, you've cottoned on there. Um, so, yeah, he's still enjoying the game, still playing away, and good to see him. Coming in and doing a, a, a bit of stuff for Go Radio. Yep, he'll be here tomorrow night along with Andy Walker, who was at the game last night. I've seen him. Uh, you no, watched I like his song. jacket. Ah, it's good, wasn't he? Yeah. He looked nifty. Look, looking smart. Yeah, he looked all right yeah. last night. That's the smartest I've seen him. Yeah. Be <laughs> well, he'll be listening. He misses nothing. And he'll be here tomorrow night. And then Peter Grant uh, on Friday, along with Rob McLean and, and Barry oh, as well. I know what Grant yeah. gears like, then. Oh, it's a different, <laughs> different class, yeah. Would that be fair? I wonder but, in, the, uh, yeah. in the winter yeah. if he still wears his shirt open. <laughs> You'll find out. <laughs> I wonder if he, he does yeah. that in the winter. Yeah. He certainly does yeah. in the yeah. summer. My old manager that um, just lost his job at QPR, yeah. he does that yeah. with his shirts. Mm. I, think, I think he'd start buttoning them up from about halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be, well, we know who the new manager is, don't we? He's been appointed today. Michael Beale was quoted for it, but did you really think that would happen? I mean, they liked him until he left. He had a great yeah, start. Yeah, I think in the manner that he left, Paul, yeah. I don't think it was ever going to, um, ever going to happen because he, he got off to a real good start and then he started to struggle a bit. Um, and then, to be fair to QPR, they, they should be a, at least challenging to get at least into the playoffs. Um, but they've been, they've been poor and that's why they've, Obviously changed. Um, is it Gareth Ainsworth? Yep. Isn't it? yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's always got his cowboy boots on, isn't he? <laughs> Aye. Yeah. It's, I mean, his, his gear is very, very out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but he done a brilliant. What a job he done at Wickham. But he had yeah. quite a. He's got a really unique way of playing. It's very. I mean, it was man marking without the ball, and it is. And I mean, that it was long ball. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. A long ball. I hardly got a touch for the last really? three yeah. months. It was, was that Wickham? Yeah. 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 And and see, be honest, I thought with the players, some of the players QPR have got some real talented players. Mm. Chris Willock. Um, I was, I was Elias Chair. I was just trying to think where are they going to fit into this system because he is. He was very much. Mm. I'm not going to change this way of playing. So and and ultimately, it hasn't worked out. It hasn't worked out. Who's going to be the new St. Johnson manager back up here? Yeah, could it be Scott Brown? And could Scott Brown, there's some questions on for both of you, could he be back playing? He's training with Spartans, 38 years old, he's won everything in the game up here. He's been out of the game since, what, early 2022 in terms of playing. Stephen, do you think it'd be possible, Scott Brown? Yeah, we, we, me and Barry spoke about it. Um, Scott Brown was fortunate in his career, he didn't have any serious injuries, any big injuries. Um, and he obviously still looks fit. I know he took part in the, the testimonial recently at Hibs and everyone was raving about the condition he was in. So see see if he's still got that wee bug where he would enjoy playing on Saturday, uh, no matter the level, why not? Um, fair play to him. Barry, could you say yeah, could it? I, yeah. Could I just say I've been involved in League 2 and it's not going to be easy. No. Yeah, because right. uh, if he does come back and, and maybe play with, with Spartans, listen, it's not going to be easy, that's for sure, because I'm sure if he's named in a team sheet or he does decide to come back, I'm sure players will be desperate to come up against him. Um, but 38... 
Listen, so I see players playing to their, their, their 40s now. Yeah. Um, you played until 38, weren't you? Just yeah, just before yeah. it, just before my uh, yep, 30th birthday. Um, and that was injury, wasn't it, otherwise? Yeah, I just yeah. got to a yeah. stage, Paul, where you're waking up in the morning, you're, you're struggling to, to get out of bed and uh, sometimes you've just got to say, right, enough's enough. Um, but it'll be interesting to see whether he wants to get back playing or does he want to go back into management. But I'm looking at St Johnson just now and I think there's somebody perfect for them. Just out. He's been there before. He's not got a job just now. He knows the club inside out. And people, some people say, don't go back a second time. But I think Callum Davison, he knows the club. Do you think it would work coming back? Yeah, because yeah. I think Callum Davison is a very good manager. Mm. See what he'd done with St Johnson. He had a yeah. period where for two or three months it never really worked but listen he's been out he's refreshed recharged the batteries he knows everybody inside the club I know there's been a few new signings but he knows the vast majority of the playing squad and I think with him going back in it would give even the fans a big lift I, I was nodding along before he named who it was yeah. Yeah. because I had in my head Tommy Wright mm. was right. out of a job and my old manager at Kilmarnock sure. and I'm thinking he ticks the boxes for the same reasons he knows what's required at that club and he knows a lot of them so yeah. He would probably be the man for me. Mm -hmm. The two of them, the continuity, isn't it? Because really it was Tommy experience. Wright's team, then mm -hmm. it was Callum's team, and yeah, you're right. Just mm -hmm. to come in instead of the ship, the two guys mm -hmm. that were mentioned, obviously, I've mentioned Callum and, and Stevens mentioned Tommy Wright. Um, they know the club, as you said, Paul, and, and this is what they need. They just need a bit of experience to come in and relax, relax the players, and get back to hopefully winning ways. It's Prague for the final. Isn't it, Stephen? Which I should have known that for the Conference League. So I was trying to get yeah. your attention there because know, right. Celtic teams out. Yeah, I thought it was. I'm just trying to get the to big, it. The, yeah. big, the big news is no Carter Vickers on the bench either. Oh. Which would be a worry so, for Celtic fans yeah. travelling to the game. Obviously yeah. such a big player for Celtic. Yep, Celtic at heart. Johnson, Phillips is in, Scales and Taylor, McGregor, O'Reilly and Turnbull. You were right on Turnbull. And Forrest and Palmer with Kyogo. So that's the big news is he just rested? I don't know. Is he? It's, it's, I mean, when you when you look at teams, you, you do it with all the teams. There's certain names that you just almost you don't even look for because you expect them to be in. But yeah, he, he's a standout name missing yep. from that list. Barry, what do you reckon? Could it be the conditions? I'm, I know the pitch is brilliant at Celtic at the moment. Yeah, but he yeah. he's one of the players that Paul if he, he's fit. He plays. Mm -hmm. So he, he might be carrying a slight knock, and and you've got to bear in mind he, he's come back off off a long layoff so maybe it's an opportunity they're at home they'll have the vast majority of possession I don't think they'll be under severe pressure with St Mern going forward so maybe that's a chance for them just to come out at, um, for 90 minutes and, and be ready for the weekend and what a chance for James Forrest he's come so close in the games he's come on Stephen and he's scored in every year hasn't he since he broke into the first team the calendar year so yep Celtic Hart Johnson Phillips Scales and Taylor McGregor, O'Reilly, Turnbull, Forrest, Palmer, and Kyogo. Rangers team. Yeah, we've got the Rangers team now as well. Barry, you've got it there. Butland, Tavernier, Golson, Balligan, yep. and Ridvan, Lindstrom, Jack, Lammers, Seema, Wright, Danilo. Right. On the bench, McCrory, yep. Dessers, Cantwell, Sifuentes, Dow, Sterling, Barisic, King, and McCausland. What do you make of it, Barry, then? First sight of the Rangers team? Yeah, just team. A, one yep. or two. Yeah that obviously I thought would have been given the opportunity yeah. but he's got Lammers in again knows, yep. yep and, and I see new, Davis yeah. is, is not even in uh, the this 18 this was looking for on the bench there there's some big talking points there obviously yeah. Lammers getting the nod again I'm really surprised with that mm -hmm. I think a lot of Rangers fans will be as well um, and Dez is on the bench no surprise can't well Sifuentes he's been missing for a while now Barry hasn't he he's been on the bench yeah. the last few games Paul yeah. there was a lot made him coming over and, and yeah. I mentioned when he signed yeah. I'd watched him mm -hmm. obviously online and I liked what I've I seen but I've obviously he's came and he's he's kind of um, it's been a bit stop start for him um, so we just need to see how he, he, he turns out. But there's, there's no doubt there's a player in there. But again, Paul, well, it's easy playing somewhere else when you come here. The, the pressures and the, the expectations and the demands that are put on you. Um, we just need to wait and see how that one works out. The Celtic bench has Bain and Yang, Holm, Navrovsky, O, Tomoki Iwata, Bernardo, Maeda and Ralston. I guess with Maeda, just giving him a break after 
Well, he knocked his pan in, didn't he, last Wednesday against Atletico and then played again at the weekend? Yeah, it could, it could be that. I mean, I've I've just gone in probably my own theory where I do think that that first goal is crucial for, for Celtic if they can get it. And the way it's going to be, I mean, some un big physical team, well organised, don't give much away. And and see, to be honest, I know since Brendan's left, James Forrest has pretty much been well out of the picture. In Brendan's eyes, he was a huge player for him. He's got a lot of trust in him. Um, it's a big game for Brendan Rodgers and Celtic tonight, so it, it doesn't shock me that he's been given a nod. You see, he's as fast as Maida, apparently, in training. Did you read that? Yeah, I mean, he's always quick. He dis- deceivingly quick. Um, I think, but obviously, Dyson Maida's, um, once he opened the legs, he, he's noticeably quick, but Brent, um, James Forrest was always really quick driving that. He'd be the ball as well. He's 32, which is nothing, of course. Right, the St Mirren lineup: Hemming, Fraser, Gogic, Taylor, Strain. Boyd Munz, O'Hara, of course, the captain, and Tanzer, Kilty, who scored at the weekend, Olisanya, and McMenamin. That's the St Mirren lineup. What do you think, Stephen? Uh, yeah, they've got yeah, a huge but, miss also. Yeah. Uh, St Mirren, yes. um, Bacchus. Of course, who scored at the weekend. Um, yeah. Not sure. What, he, he, him and O'Hara, the partnership. Mm-hmm. The, the way St Mirren play, they almost play it's like a 3 4 3, but they two in the middle, they cover an amazing amount mm-hmm. of distance, and they're, you're huge players for them. And Boyd Munz is a different type, He's, he looks to get on the ball. I think that's a huge miss for St Mirren tonight. Obviously, he likes to change the, the striker about. Obviously, Mandarin scored a couple of goals at the weekend, but yeah. no surprise to see Olisanya come in. But um, I think Bacchus is a huge miss for St Mirren. Still waiting for the Dundee lineup, Barry. I know you'll have it first. You don't have it yet. Um, do you want the harsh lineup for tonight? Clark, Kent, Kingsley, Beningame, Shanklin, the captain, has scored at the weekend. Boyce, Devlin, Rowles, Forrest, Alan Forrest, obviously, Cochran. And Lowry, so Lowry in from the beginning. So that's the Hearts lineup. And for uh, for Livy, yeah, we'll give you the Livy lineup now. Hamilton, Devlin, Pittman, Kelly, Welsh Hayes, Holt, Nibley, Sangari, Shinney, Sean Kelly, and Penrice. So, what do you think in this one, Barry? Will I get your prediction now? Because it's going to be yeah, some I'm, game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and I, I fancy Hearts to win it, Paul, because. They're at home, obviously, and uh, there'll be a big crowd at uh, Tyne Castle, but I don't think it's going to be easy. And, and uh, again, I, I think Hearts will win the game 2-1, but don't write off Livy. I know the disappointing result of the weekend, but obviously going down to 10 men. But if Hearts don't get that three points, the, 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 the Hearts fans are not going to be happy with that. Yeah, because they're not where they expected to be. No. They're on 11 points. Same as Motherwell, same as Dundee at the moment. Stephen, what are you thinking for this one? Well, I was thinking that if Peter Heron doesn't pull Conor Goldson in the box, mm. it'd be a very different Hearts team tonight. I think if they win at Ibrox on Sunday, he's probably thinking he's got a bit more money in the bank to maybe make a few changes with the semi-final in mind, being such a huge game, because if you take out Route Rangers, let's be honest, what a chance it is to win Silverware. Yeah. No Celtic, no Rangers in the final. Um, so, But I think it's a huge game for, for Stephen A. Smith tonight. It's such a huge week for him, the, isn't the, it? They're horrible yeah. games as well. I know yeah. that a lot's been made of that away allocation, but yeah. it's a team that come with hardly any fans, no pressure on them at all, yeah. and they really fight and scrap for everything, make it really difficult for you. That is not an easy one at all for Stephen Esma. So what's your scoreline tonight for Hearts against Livy? I th- I've gone for 1-0. Right. Um, I, I wasn't sure. I mean, by the way they're playing, I don't fancy them to win any game at the minute, but I just think with the full-strength team, Shanklin 1-0. It's hard to see what he's doing with the team, isn't it, Barry, for Stephen Naismith? Young manager, mm-hmm. great player, um, it's early in his career, but what a week for him this is going to be. Yeah, I mean, I think tonight's huge. I know Sunday's huge as well because it's a semi-final, but I think he needs, needs to take care of tonight. He needs to make sure he gets three points in the bag. Or, I mean, I know what Hearts fans are like, Paul. They're a very demanding set of fans. Um, so if there's anything less than three points... I don't think they'll be very happy at Tyne Castle. More team news and predictions from Stephen and Barry next. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Switch to clean, renewable energy and reduce your bills by up to 70%. Let's go! Back with more traffic and travel tomorrow morning. Rochelle along with Crofty and Grado, who were in great form this morning. Were, was the wee one out trick or treating or Halloween last night? Stephen, just looking at you because Barry, ours are all too old for that. Yes, we yeah, are. Yeah. And my teeth are killing me today because <laughs> we come back, my wife sorts out the contraband, which she's not allowed. And that's the bits that I've to eat. So uh, yeah. my teeth are killing yeah, today. Oh, dude, you've had all the sticky stuff and all Lollies. that. Yeah. 
Barry, were they up at your gate? Oh, last they're, night? they're no. too. Um, yeah. Oh, we are. In terms of my kids, yeah, obviously, no, they're, sure. all, they're all yeah. grown up. But I used to love it. I used to. Yeah, I love taking them down to the, the grands or whatever. Mm. Um, but I see you've not been changed for last night. No, I was out earlier on today. Yeah. We were, yeah. Halloween uh, was last very night. Very good, Paul. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I went in for a coffee and the woman said she forgot to put the milk in. She said, yeah, I've never seen somebody dressed like that. <laughs> it was a suit, that was it. <laughs> Barry will be... It's, under, it's it, what's underneath the uh, suit. Exactly, yep. Um, just <laughs> looking forward to the games tonight. And, yeah. I see the was going to go. I'm just reading here yep. that it was dodgy about 10, 15 minutes ago, the, the Still? Rangers game, yeah. My goodness. It was a downpour. Yeah. Cause it but had, it's on. Good. It was getting better, um, but the game is on. So we're giving you team news as it comes in. Still waiting for the Dundee team. I think it may have landed now. Um, just It's coming in. No, in fact, that's the... Let's get St. Johnson against Killy. Uh, you can always say it's one of your old teams when Stephen's in here, can't we? Because he's been at so many of the Scottish team so what a game this is going to be for St Johnson because they're going to get strang um, stranded at the bottom of the table it's Mitoff of course in goals Costello McGowan and Gordon the captain who's been speaking in the last few days Considine Robinson Sprangler Smith Carey Kane and Clark so that double act there up against Kilmarnock who've had a, a good October uh, Dennis Mayo Finlay Wright Armstrong, Lyons, Watson, Polworth, Kennedy, Watkins and Vassell, of course, the captain. What are you thinking, Stephen, about this one then? St Johnson, Kelly? I, I can't see past a commandment win. Mm. Um, I think they're really strong. I think they're going well. I think they've got Vassell who's flying at the minute. He's leading the line. The armband seems to have taken him to another level. Um, and like any Derry McInnes team, they don't give much away, so... Um, I've gone for I couldn't one or two now. I've gone for one nil commander. Even away from home, given that last season it wasn't so good and probably affected by. I know, I know yeah. but I do. I think they're better. Yeah. I think he's. I think he made good signs in the, the transfer window. I think they've got more legs in the team than they had last year. I think it really resembles a Derek McInnes team. Mm-hmm. I think it's nearly how he exactly how he had imagined imagined it when he took over the job. Um, so I think he'll be happy with how things are going, and I think they win tonight. And Kel Vassell, he loves being captain, doesn't he, Barry? He's got better. Yeah, watching him on Sunday, I thought him and Watkins mm. were, were very good. Um, real physical presence up top. I, I was real impressed with Kilmarnock. Um, and obviously they, they had a, a, a sticky start. I know they beat Rangers and then they, they obviously beat Celtic in the Cup, but then they, they, they were struggling to, to maybe get a few points. But listen, I, I think over the last few weeks they've, they've certainly kicked on and as I said, they, they thoroughly deserve to, to get the three points. And they were, to be honest with you, they were miles better than Aberdeen. And, and I know people say, oh, it's the Astro turf, but take that away. Dale's got a, a, a decent team there. That would have been sweet for him. What's your scoreline tonight then? St. Johnson 1, Kilmarnock 2. I think Kilmarnock will be too strong. Okay. Yeah. Mar- Marley Watkins, what was that about? The celebration down on his... Did you see that? No, he was down. They said it was something to do for his kids. He, he went down on all fours and sort of crawled along. But I think it was his kids said, "If you score, um, do that for us." Got the Dundee team up against Rangers tonight. Carson Beck, Shaughnessy, the captain, and double scorer at the weekend. Tiffany, Bakayoko, Lamy, McCowan, Boating, Donnelly, Silla, and Portales. So Rangers fans, if you've just tuned in. We gave you it first, Barry had it. Rangers are Butland, Tavernier, Goldson, Balligan and Ridvan, Lundstrom and Jack, Lammers, Seema, Wright and Danilo. So, yeah. What are you thinking on this one, Barry? Well, it's 4-3-3 what the the new manager's been playing. It'll be Jack and Lundstrom will be sitting in the middle of the pitch. Lammers just in front of them. Seema and Wright in the wide areas and, and Danilo through the middle. And to be honest with you, I'm just happy to see Danilo. I'd spoke to quite a few people and like the first part of his Rangers career he was playing on the left hand side and I thought he looked out of sorts and then speaking to um, a few people who have played over in in Holland and, and know him pretty well saying listen he's a number nine he plays in the shoulder his movement's really good and obviously seen that at, at St Johnson when he scored the goal and obviously unfortunately got that bad injury and then I thought at the weekend in the second half against Hearts you could see the difference that he, he made 
And always a good sign when a manager comes in a new one and says, yeah, I tried to sign that boy for Genk a few years ago or for mm. Bruges. So that's always a good sign, isn't it? Oh, yeah, but I'm sure Daniel will be happy with that because yep. well, he's just a new sign and I'm sure he, he wouldn't want to move anywhere. But I like seeing him through the middle and I thought the goal against Hearts, I know the ball for Tavernier was excellent, but if you watch his movement, any young striker watching that, he just peels off the blind side of the, the centre half and it's a... A brilliant finish into the Hearts goal. Stephen Lammers is in there. Is the manager seeing something that a lot of the Rangers fans haven't seen so far? No, he's probably seen less of them than the Rangers fans. He, a lot of Rangers fans have written him off already. But as I said, I think he need he, he's, he's taking that job on without a transfer window. Mm. I don't expect to see, unless there's a, a, a drastic improvement, I don't expect it, Lammers to still be starting games for Rangers after the transfer window. He's he's just trying to coax a bit out of them. He, he needs them. Um, he might have an idea of how the game's going to go tonight, and um, maybe just be his size. I don't know why he's been given a nod, but he has, and, and he and he, he is backing him. He's backing him to, to try and prove something to the Rangers support. But just on, I think it's going to be a tough game. I think I'm delighted for Tony Doherty. Um, I got on great with him at, at Kilmarnock, and, and I've got to say I was really surprised that he stepped out. From um, the partnership with Derek McInnes in the summer to take on a manager's job, and he's came up against Rangers a million times as an assistant manager. But it's quite a big night for for him and Dundee. Um, newly promoted, first game against Celtic Rangers at home under the light. So um, I think Rangers will win, but I don't think they'll have it easy. Let's just hope the game's on. I've just seen yeah. it's been delayed. Oh dear, it's not the good. Feels a waterlogged right. pitch. So yep. obviously there's been a, a fair bit of rain yep. the last. Um, 20 or 30 minutes so that's not I mean it's been called on I mean fans going up to Dundee yeah. and buses and huh? and whatever so hopefully they can with delaying it they can get the pitch and play in order so they can get the, the game ahead let's going ahead hope, sorry let's hope so I remember back in August you remember that there was a downpour mm -hmm. in August and they said oh the Dundee game might be in doubt I don't know why uh, that is so early. So we'll keep you up to date between now and seven. What's your scoreline though, Barry? Do you reckon if the game goes ahead? I think it's going to be close. Yeah. Um, as I said, Tony Dock, Stephen just mentioned there, he's, he's got a brilliant name in the game in terms of he's a very good coach. He knows how to organise a team and set a team up. Um, but I think Rangers have had too much. I think Dundee won Rangers too. Here's the manager, Philippe Clement, speaking about something that you spoke about, Barry, during the Michael Beale's day, Beale's day, that you need to have a good relationship between the team and the fans. For sure, and it's, uh, like I said, a two-way street. We, the players, need to show first our, our passion, giving everything, uh, wanting to do everything to get results, and then the fans follow, and that you saw in the weekend. Um, the players gave everything, they kept on going, so... If you repeat this for a certain time, you, you will get back credit in the bank for a certain moment. And for the moment, it's, it's building up these things to, to not do it one time, but do it several times. That's a task to do. And then uh, there can be an incredible energy and synergy in the stadium again, because that's, for me, one of the, street, uh, one of the reasons to come here, because I have saw this, how much power that can give. I believe also a lot. In, in those things so it's one thing uh, one of the important things I want to recreate between fans and, uh, and the players so they're just looking at the ground at the moment with uh, the heavy rain which has come back on and Tayside it had gone off earlier this afternoon uh, Stephen we're still waiting for the Motherwell team can you give it to us as your brother I know he never would uh, what are you feeling about Motherwell then Aberdeen I know we touched on it earlier what do you think it's difficult not having seen the team there but you fancy the well yeah, well, I hope. I mean, it's, got, it's a really big game. Obviously, Aberdeen have showed they can go to Ibrox and win. They can go to Frankfurt and, and compete. So, um, I th expect to see a better Aberdeen than we saw on Sunday. Um, but but Motherwell, Motherwell need a result as well. Mm -hmm. um, they get a lot of credit for the way they've played, but that's within defeats. I think they've got the full-strength team now. They've got young Lennon Miller back, who's a big mm -hmm. part of the way they play. Um, I expect him to come back into the mm -hmm. team and... I would expect Beeriff to play. I don't know what his fitness is, is like, but he's a big player for them as well up front. And that that's the two changes, if, if I'm guessing, that's who it would be. I, I was going to I, yeah. ask you, obviously, Paul sees him most days at Lennon Miller. What does he say about him? He, he said, I mean, I don't... Obviously, when you, you speak about young players, you, you hate pressure on them, as you say, are the, the best. But he said he's the best young player he's played with. He, th he thinks he's yeah, got everything. Well. And he's playing tonight as Kelly... 
uh, the captain. interesting because yeah. Paul, you, you get a lot yeah. of people saying that. Yeah. Well, we only see them in games, but generally, if you see somebody the in the out and it's, how they train and how they apply themselves. It's, it's a drop off, honestly, the drop off in performance when he's not playing. Motherwell did an amazing comeback at the weekend, but for the first time this season, they probably got battered. Yep. Um, Ross County were the better team for long spells, but he makes a big difference at his young age. Yeah, they bounce back. Kelly, O'Donnell, McGinn, Mugabe, Casey, Spencer, Slattery, Miller, Spittle, Payton, and Wilkinson up against the Dons. Roos, Devlin, McKenzie, Shinny the captain, Jensen, Garton Mann, McGrath, Miofsky, Clarkson, Polvara, and Rubizic. What's your scoreline in this one, Barry? What do you reckon? For Motherwell I think Motherwell will win the game. Yeah. Yeah, um, I was yeah. thinking 2-0 two two. I'll, I'll go Motherwell 2, Aberdeen 1 Steve McGinn, what do you think? I've gone for 1-1 one, one. Going for 1-1 one, one. And for Celtic fans, if you're heading to the game We gave you the team a while ago And the headline is that uh, Carter Vickers is not playing Nor is he on the bench Celtic are Hart, Johnson, Phillips, Scales and Taylor McGregor, O'Reilly and Turnbull So Turnbull's in, it's not Bernardo Hatate obviously injured and James Forrest is in from the start, Palma and Kyogo. Up against, uh, I almost said a ramp in St Mirren, but they're not, but they're playing really, really well. And their manager, Celtic's manager, spoke about his opposite number, Stephen Robinson. Yeah, I, th- I think he's, he's proven himself to be an excellent manager and coach, Stephen. He, uh, obviously, when I was up here the first time, he'd done a very, very good job at Motherwell, you know, getting them to two finals. The league in the Scottish Cup was... Uh, it was a fantastic achievement and these teams were always hard to play against and you look now coming into St Mirren it's the same same idea You've got them very well organised they work very hard you see they're very much a team and like I say they, they're always very very competitive so so I think he's an excellent manager done really well I look forward to seeing him on, on Wednesday and uh, we will also expect a tough match What do you think the scoreline is Stephen? Obviously no Mikey Johnson as well but uh, what do you reckon tonight? Yeah well coming to the game I'm surprised that Carter Vickers not playing but I'm also yeah. surprised that Bacchus isn't playing I think it's a big blow for, for both sides but especially for St Mon. I'm going for 2-0 Celtic Can I just jump in to say Dundee have just tweeted due to severe traffic disruption the kick-off is being delayed turnstiles are open as normal they'll update as soon as possible but it is delayed at the moment Barry, what do you reckon? Any change at the top tonight then? Celtic against St Mirren in fact the breaking news yep, it is Yep, about the delays in the Who waterlogged pitch. It's delayed anyway. <laughs> it's delayed with waterlogged pitch. It's not delayed at Celtic. What's going to happen? I think um, look, I think Simon will make it tough for Celtic, but too much quality. Celtic 3, St Man 1. 3-1. Three, one. You reckon there, and then mm. ready for the weekend. Thanks very much. Tomorrow night, Graham Dorans, as I mentioned, will be here with Andy Walker. It's a tough night to play, isn't it? When it's absolutely... Pelting, so things could. Yeah, but I, I don't set. mind any pause right. as yeah. long as there's no wind. Um, I think if you ask any footballer, that that's the worst conditions to play in. Wind, horrendous, rain, snow, whatever. I don't, I don't like playing in the sun either. Yeah. I hated sunny days. <laughs> Did you like playing? <laughs> I know it. you loved it. Oh, we know that. It's far far yeah. better out there than a roasting hot day in Astroturf. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a good point. <laughs> and on that note, thanks, Stephen. See you soon. Good luck at the weekend. I know you'll be at the game anyway. Hopefully back soon, Barry. Thanks so much. You'll be back Cheers on Friday. Paul. Cheers. 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 News is next. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Switch to clean, renewable energy and reduce your bills by up to 70%. Let's go. Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk.